And with every wicked deception directed against those who are perishing because they refuse to love the truth that would have set them free. For this reason, God will send them over a powerful delusion so that they may believe the lie in order that judgment may come upon all those who have disbelieved the truth and delighted in wickedness. 2 Thessalonians 2, 10 to 12. We see that everywhere. People delight in wickedness so they get angry when someone shares the truth of God revealed through Jesus Christ. And that's why I'm always talking about the prince and power of the air referred to in Ephesians 2. And I'm going to read, I'm going to read a, a good bit of it. And you he made alive. You were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. There's so many delusions being planted every day. I saw the movie Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. So many agendas being pushed, very normal ones, you know, ones that had nothing to do with much bigger theological things, but things that divide us. The, the central human figure was a female. I was surprised she was white, actually, but she was the dominant human character. There was one white male who lacked the backbone, who sold out his fellow humans to support the apes. Not surprising, they made him a weak human being. Uh, and there were so many parallels between the Romans versus the religious elite of the time and with the name play of, of Caesar, the ape, who started the revolution of the apes. Then this human virus gave them extra intelligence and they were set free by Caesar. In the beginning it said that he sacrificed himself so that they could be free. He was like this Messiah figure. But then his followers were going out and killing people and slaughtering and burning down villages in his name, just as many people do in Jesus' name, blaspheming his name, using his name in vain for personal gain and power, which is not at all what we should be doing if we're a follower of Jesus, just like if you're familiar with the movies, if you knew the monkey Caesar, you would not be going out slaying people. Uh, and then saying it's to honor him. But that's just the, the beginning. I mean, I, one of the most obvious things is they're showing us monkeys, apes, orangutans commingling with human beings. And yet one of the biggest lies is evolution that discounts a creator to make us think we evolved from monkeys. And, you know, a lot of people ask that question. You'll get all these high-minded, humanistic thinking answers about Oh, you know, to understand evolution, you've got to realize it's not linear. We share a common ancestor, but the fossils, you know, they haven't found the fossils. But, you know, it's, it, there, there's so many different reasons to explain. It's not as simple as if you evolved from something that you can't coexist. But, no, it really is that simple because creation is really simple. And every, every honest physicist, astronomer, um, somebody who studies the the dynamics of our universe will tell you there's a starting point, a big bang, so to speak. There's truth in that, that there was a big bang because everything did come into creation at once. There, there too, there was a creator. But Satan, the prince and power of the air, the god of this world, plants seeds of delusion to pull us away from that truth. So I know this is something I harp on all the time, but the reason I do that is because we're living in a day and age where that darkness, that delusion is being thrust even further and further, and you're seeing people dig their heels in their worldly thinking, being more and more incentivized to attack and demonize Christians and believers, only further hardening their hearts and separating them from God, making it harder and harder to share with people because you know you're going to feel the wrath if you fall onto a, a, a trigger word, Usually when you talk about Jesus or any type of sin, because we're not allowed to call out sin, but sin is exactly what separates us from God. And these delusions in movies, like the Planet of the Apes, it's, it's 
visually stunning. It's remarkable to watch. I don't even know. It, it just blows my mind that we have the technology to be able to do this. But even in that movie, you just see how amazing it is what mankind has been able to build. But there was some supernatural intelligence behind that because they, there has been assistance from the fallen angels in this world, but that's a whole other story. Quick worldly example of the delusion, not just in cinema. Here's two headlines from the news the last couple of days. Falling birth rates worldwide impact overall economics and geopolitics. They're saying that the level to sustain population, the infertility rate is so high that the population is going to start dwindling. When you realize the powers in this world have a depopulation agenda, it's exactly what they want. So then the question is, how has that happened? Perhaps it's a delusion in things that we've been sold that we are allowing ourselves to be <clears throat> injected with or putting into our system willingly because we think it's in our best interest, but actually it's not. It's things that are killing us. There are so many things that are killing us that we have no idea about. You put that in conjunction with not just physical things being put in our body, but the type of gaslighting and indoctrination we're under every day in our minds. Gay men file a lawsuit against New York City for being denied IVF treatment. Do I have a need to explain this? Obviously, the sexuality of man. We were created male and female in God's image. From the male, female was created. It's a perfect complement to one another in a marriage covenant. They come together to procreate and create life. Male and female, that's it. Females are the ones that have the burden and the blessing of giving birth to giving life. Vessels used by God to bring life into this world. But now we have men filing a lawsuit because they're not being given a chance to artificially somehow give birth via IVF, the in vitro fertilization, which has become a thing because they've been... They've been messing with our fertility rates. In men and women, it's not, you know, men have become more sterile. Look at Bill Gates in India and all the problems and the, the, the way that he's not well liked there because of what happened to their fertility rates there when he started vaccinating that population. Shouldn't have said that word. But anyway, just be very, very <laughs> uh, studious in the word so you do not fall for the lie. Uh, to get back into Ephesians 2. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, least anyone should boast. It's Ephesians 2, 1 to 9, if you want to read all of that, and I encourage you to do that. The Word of God has a way of making things make sense when this world will foster confusion if you try to understand forced ideologies that pull you away from God and the truth of who Jesus is. So stick to His Word, and you'll find the truth. God bless you. See you tomorrow.